This particular miniature, uh, this is the Blackfish, and he's one of the models you would find in the hero set for the Starks. And uh, not only is he a cool looking model, um, Brendan Tully, but he's also very good as, a, as a, an attachment for your units as well. So I thought, I've already painted the mounted figure, and I might, I might paint up another mounted figure later on, just um, so I can go back and look, over, look at painting horses and that kind of thing for him. But for now, I'm going to do the one on foot. And um, I might do it in a, a series of four videos or so, but for now, I just want to concentrate on one thing. That'll be the armor. Okay, so just to give a bit of a breakdown of what paints I'm using on my palette. So I've got some black. That's the one down the bottom here. Okay, some just regular black. Okay, I'm using Vallejo paints, but you know, please use alternative paints, whatever you have in your in your stock. Um, this color here is um, becoming very popular. Actually, I'm using it more and more and more. Uh, it, not only for armor, but for shading and you know, I prime I prime my miniatures in a, in a color very similar to this. This is dark gray blue. Um, and this this is actually a model air paint, and um, I use a lot of the model airs paints just as regular paints, um, either because of the color, or because of its um, uh, maybe they're, they're more vibrant. You know, some of the air air model air colors a bit more vibrant. The model color paints tend to be very um, very matte uh, in finish. Um, this is also another model air color. This is that that bluish uh, gray. That's light sea blue. Uh, that's a nice combination I found between those two colors for doing armor. Um, and then as we lighten up the scale, we've got some pale blue. It's a model color from Vallejo. Okay, that's a really nice light um, pale blue color. And then we've got white, and that'll be sort of like the the final sort of highlights we'll do on his armor and some other parts as well. So, um, just getting back to the mini now, we're gonna start uh, putting some base colors down on his armor. I'm just using a, a series, like the, um, the Series 7 Winsor Newton size one brush for this. Just taking some of our dark Gray blue. I should wrap my hand around the camera there. It's a bit easier. And uh, yeah, we can start putting some base coats on the armor. I thought I'd start with these these range of miniatures as they're sort of the new hotness at the moment. I think people are um, having either collected their pledges or now buying the game online. Uh, through their through stockists or through uh, cool money or not, that um, you'll probably see it more and more now in your local game store being played and demoed. It's actually really a really good game. I'm really I'm really glad I actually uh, put the money down and purchased the Kickstarter because, especially with the extra content that you picked up with that, it gave you enough enough miniatures to have you know 50, 50 point. Uh, per side games, which is a, a nice, decent size um, level to really use a lot of the um, attachments and and heroes. Uh, the game's actually based on the books, not actually based on the TV series. So, just in case you're wondering, I have not read the books. I have watched the TV series and love the TV series, but. I appreciate um, when game companies uh, tend to use like either the original art forms or, uh, or I should say, from like the original IP, rather than based on the movies or uh, TV series. Sometimes, because I like the um, I like seeing different kinds of art or different styles of art than that on the. Uh, TV shows, so a bit like Lord of the Rings has been sort of done to death. You've seen the same 
style orcs, the same style trolls, the same style, you know, um, hobbits or what have you. So I'd like to see just a, a different take on things. So a lot of the artwork from this game yeah, is not 100% reflective on um, the TV series, so... Just makes it a bit more interesting. So just putting a nice uh, thin coat of that dark blue-grey on his armour. something else on his chest that's part of his um, his robe and loincloth and that kind of thing which would be in a white I think from memory yeah but that'll be in a separate video we're not going to do all that today we're just going to try to just do the armor for first and I can see a mold line running through his his face here so I need to clean that out uh, later and, and uh, fix that up before doing the face. And we'll let it dry. Now that we've let that dry, uh, the base coat to dry, we're going to take some of that um, dark blue grey. I'm going to mix some of the light sea blue into there. As you can see in the palette. Okay, so like a 50 50 mix using the same brush. And you know, his armor's quite, uh, you know, in the artwork, it's quite bright and shiny and. So I want to try to try to capture the same kind of feeling to um, this armor. Looks a bit quite regal and so we just got to you know slowly build up the the um, highlights. Yeah, it's good to see another, you know, mass tabletop fantasy game out there. A lot of it's, you know, a lot of it at the, at the moment in the industry is very skirmish orientated with small numbers of miniatures and um, no sort of rank and file anymore apart from Kings of War, I guess. But it's good to see, yeah, it's good to see another game getting a bit more traction, a bit more popularity out there. And um, a 
and it deserves a bit of praise really because it's it's got some really nice interesting mechanics that aren't usually in mass tabletop games like you've got a um, what's called an NCU non-combat unit that uh, plays its abilities and other tactics on a tactics board Uh, which sort of, as someone else described it when I read it, which, you know, rings true, is that it kind of acts like magic because there are no, there are actual, there's no magic phase, there are no spells as such. So the, yeah, the NCU role really covers your magic in the game. Adds that sort of hidden element that's, um, you know, either causing units damage or giving them certain status effects that you've got to deal with. Uh, I've only played it three games so far, but um, in those three games I was really impressed with how it plays. So just going back again, I'm just adding a little bit more of that light sea blue into the mix and just going over again, sort of starting at the sort of more highlighted areas. Yeah, just sort of starting from the top and blending your way down. Try not to get the paint in the creases or the armour. Just mixing a bit of that pale blue into the light sea blue. Just to corner off that edge there, okay? Just just so you can see uh, the graduations of, of color and um, where it's all sort of leading to. It's a very faint line there. Yeah, so we can sort of finish off that small part on the on the arm there, so you can see the um, finished effect. Just took a moment to readjust the camera, so, and uh, just to make it a bit easier for me to get into those really hard areas. So again, just blending from the top to the bottom and um, using some of our lighter, lighter greys 
and um, as the paint's still wet I like to just blend it through and going back and forth until um, you know, I reach I reach a point where I think yep yeah, that's you know that's sort of blended through nicely and um, You know, the transitions look um, smooth. You know, uh, non-metallic metal is a bit of a debated kind of technique. Um, some people are just, you know, all for uh, true metallics. And um, yeah, they look fantastic too. I just prefer to do it in uh, non-metallic metals ever since uh, I think Rackham sort of really made it popular with their confrontation range. And I uh, haven't looked back since really. I thought I'd just concentrate in areas like as I'm going so I can sort of try to finish off an area before going on to the next one. So just coming back and picking out some more of those details on his armor. Just mixing some of that pale blue with the light sea, um, light sea blue and it gives a nice sort of mid-tone highlight <clears throat> to do around the edging and that kind of thing around the armor plates. Now I think his arm's pretty much done, so maybe just part of this leg here I haven't done yet. And some parts are pretty dark, so I'll need to go back. <clears throat> Mixing some of the um, dark blue-gray into the light sea-gray or light blue-gray. Again, you know, you can use it whatever colours you want. There's so many different combinations for non-metallic um, metals. And I guess that's one of the nice advantages it has over the true metallics is that you can come up with various different shades of, you know, either blue greys or just sort of um, more black greys. Or blue, blue, green, greys. You know, you can have all different kinds of tints to the to the colours as well. So really, you can have many different combinations that you can come up with. And yeah, I've done that with various models. You know, just try just try to change it up a bit. And you know, I always used to use um. <clears throat> like London Grey and Luftwaffe World War II um, Grey as as like a combination and mixed in with um, I think it's Stonewall Grey and now I sort of changed again so I just went to a different different colour choice so yeah you, you know you can 
find, find your own set of colors that you're really happy with. The technique doesn't change, it's just the colors that you use, so. You might already have a set of blue grays or, you know, green, greenish kind of blues that you really like. You know, just use those. Yeah, sort of defining it now, defining the armor a bit more now with the with that uh, pale blue. That's another another paint I got by mistake. I ordered, I had intended for something else, but this is what I got, and I um, in just in just in sheer confusion of maybe maybe the names have changed of some of the paints. Maybe some paints that I've got are so old that they don't have them anymore. That's probably not the case. They probably do have it. I just made a mistake on uh, on ordering it and got this paint instead. I thought, well, that's a really nice looking blue, like a really light blue, blue gray. So yeah, I can use that. No problem. <clears throat> I'll have to one day just you know just get every single model color paint they have, just for the sake of completeness, and then I have you know, every single shade and that'll be a nice idea. And, um, but I don't know, I've been looking at maybe getting, branching out into other paint, paint systems as well. Even trying some of the Games Workshop um, inks so I've heard they're quite good. The paints I don't really care too much for, but I heard the inks are quite good. Gonna mix some white into the pale blue there. And starting from the top here. He's got some very fine detail on his armor. This is actually a really nice um, produce mini actually because some of the minis have from this from this range have been quite furry and the in the like the plastic's been quite furry in the detail but this one's been dead smooth the only problem with it is that if you can probably you can probably notice that 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 sword is bent <clears throat> just the tip there and after contacting Simon about it, um, you know, they instructed me to do the, the usual thing and just get like um, really hot water and, and try to uh, bend it back. But with the um, ABS plastics, it's not, it's not really possible, I don't think. I did try it and it didn't really work, so I thought I'd just leave it and 
there's not much you can do about it. I can understand they're not going to replace every single <clears throat> small defect on a model. Looking forward to playing another game of Song of Ice and Fire now. It's been a long time since my last, well, the first games we played. I only had three games playing three different scenarios, or two different scenarios from memory. And um, yeah, it's a really fantastic, fantastic system. And um, now that it's been released um, to retail, I think. <clears throat> a lot of people out there who enjoyed um, Warhammer back in the day are going to um, really enjoy this. And uh, yeah, I can see it being very successful for them actually. Another another game system that <clears throat> bypassed me completely was the Lord of the Rings, which I have been um, looking at um, online recently with the new release by Games Workshop. That Pelennor Fields box set, and um, yeah, I've got to say I'm tempted to venture into the Lord of the Rings IP again and <clears throat> give that a go. So it looks like a good it looks like a good fun system that. And I like a lot of the miniatures that were produced by not only the Perrys but um, there's another guy who who did a lot of the the sculpts back in the day. I can't remember who his name was now. It's not Brian Hansel, I don't think. Might be Brian Hansel. <clears throat> but um, yeah, they they did they made a lot of really nice miniatures and a lot of miniatures I didn't even know that they existed until recently. during the days when I wasn't, um, yeah, wasn't in the loop with the GW hobby really for a long time. Just got burnt out by it, I think. I think a lot of people felt the same. Got into other things like Rackham in a big way. Not in actually playing the game, but just you know, just buying the miniatures and painting them.
And I recently picked up um, a box of the Tully Sworn Swords. So expect a tutorial on them. Because um, Brendan Tully needs his Sworn Swords. And they're really, really nice looking miniatures too. Fantastic. So I'm just going through now and just um, finishing off his armour with the white and pale blue, pale blue, pale blue, blue grey. Just picking out all those points of light that will be on his armour. Just kind of paint a dot of white paint there on the like the center part of those, those plates. It's like a little ping of light. and um, that's overlapped part of the detail or something like that or something that you just want to shade in to make it darker um, now you, can, uh, you can add like really dark browns to that as well if you wanted to instead of like doing it with the um, dark blue grey but sort of keep his armor nice and shiny so I'll avoid using the browns and just use this as my shading color I think everything's pretty well defined it's just that um, just in case there was something that picked up initially and be gone over by accident so like in the cleanup phase eh yep I think that's gonna be that's gonna be it I think for us now 
And of course, if you wanted to go one step further, which I might do, I might, I'm just thinking about because the Tully's, you know, they have um, a lot of this kind of turquoise color to the, a lot of their armor. And um, I didn't actually do that with the mounted version of Brendan, so, but what I'll do for this one, <clears throat> just to add a bit of a tint to his armor, I'm gonna add, it's got some turquoise ink here. Very, very lightly, so adding lots of water to that. <clears throat> as like kind of a, just a tint really tint parts of his armor but you know you could have just left it as it was it's it's not really necessary this is just more of a cosmetical thing that I think the suits the tullies well and like in their um in their sort of faction art perhaps that kind of uh turquoise sort of color which is what i'll be doing with a lot of the infantry too like a lot of their shields and armor will have that kind of color on them as well i think that looks really nice Yeah, and I'm liking the look of that so far. That's pretty cool. But for the mounted one, I might uh, I might see if my mate wants to possibly swap his unpainted one for my painted one so that I can do it again. Because I did make a mistake with the horse. It's the wrong colour. It should really be black. Like in the art, like match it to the art kind of thing. So let's see what he says. If he wants to do that, or I'll just paint it for him or whatever. I can do another video on that. Because that was a fun mini to paint. And I think he's becoming, you know, probably my favourite, you know, personality of the Starks. I haven't actually used him as a commander yet, but I, I can see in his cars that. You know, he favours cavalry. Um, and there's like the un unmounted commander as well. I, I'm pretty sure there's an unmounted commander that he can be as well as an option. So, might just been so long since I've seen looked at the cards. I need to go back and have a look at them now. But um, yeah, I think he's just a great, great character. And really, really nice figure. So I think I might leave it there guys at 22 minutes in um, on this video, so, um, but I think that armor's pretty much done. We might have to refine it a little later once that ink's dried, but I think for this stage, we'll leave that there for now and then we can concentrate on something else. Perhaps next I will do the, um, do his tunic in a white. Or we might do the cape in black. We'll see how we go. And today, I thought we'd concentrate on doing the black cloak. Um, so on my palette, I've just got a few colors down already. I've just got black. Okay, just any regular black would do. Uh, I've got a dark gray. That's just nice um, to sort of start up and building up the, the highlights with a very dark gray color. Okay, so anything like that sort of shade would be would be good, or just mixing it, uh, mixing your black with another another dark dark gray or something like this, like a, a dark blue gray. <coughs> if you don't have the dark gray available, so I've got that on my palette too, the dark blue gray, and I've got uh, that's right, London gray. I put a through a few grays down there. I thought I might see. Um, how I go and if I need a couple of other greys I've got them handy on my palette anyway. So London grey and I've got this pale blue 
which is quite a light, the highlight color. Okay, so I'm just using a size one brush for this and uh, I'm gonna get some of the black. Just add a bit of water to water, uh, thin it down a bit. And I'm gonna add some of that dark gray to it as well. And um, as it's just got the primer on there, I'm just gonna give it a, um, a, a coat of that to start. So we've got a nice wet base of um, dark grey or, you know, a dark shade of grey or black to work with. Um, we're just going to take some of that dark blue-grey, mix it in there, so we've got a lighter, lighter shade. And we wanted to start you know, putting that onto the raised parts of the cloak. Black's hard to see, especially under like an LED light like this. It's pretty hard to see where the highlights are so far. I can just see them very faint. <clears throat> we want to keep it fairly dark anyway. Just adding some of that London grey in there. That's a really nice colour. I really like London grey. Um, I use it a lot for um, doing the non-metallic metals before um, before switching colors. I use that a lot. And um, again, just going over the raised areas again on the cloak. So we can probably see a slight difference, hopefully, under the camera you can see that. Again, black's really hard to see, especially under this light, it's really difficult to see the transitions uh, more than any other colour. I'm going to add some of that uh, pale blue now to the mix. And now we should really see some... Um, some differences here. So basically I'm just going to line that in onto the very, uh, you know, the peaks, the tops of those folds on his cloak. Just working my way from the top down. Now you might actually go over, like I just did, uh, into areas where you don't want that, or it's, it's sort of streaked over onto some of the mid-tones. So you can just sort of blend it back with the colours on your uh, original mix here.
Okay, well, it's a little bit messy, but um, I think that'll do for our blacks today. Okay, guys, so I'm going to leave it there, I think. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, guys, so back again. Hopefully this is going to be the final video. I'm quickly going to do the sword first, and then I'll work on his face and hair at the end. And his belt. <clears throat> and that means she should be done by then, so... Uh, let's get to it. So I'm using uh, dark blue grey and I'm going to use that as a base for the sword and the hilt. As they will be the same colour as the armour. I should have done it at the same time I did the armour actually. Now thinking about it, but that's okay. So we'll just add some of that um, light, light sea blue. Run it across the blade there and on the hilt and handle. Just sort of like doing a, like a 50 50 mix between the two. While the, the base coat is still um, done. I'm just adding more of that light sea blue and then we're just going to go over again just on the top areas now of the blade and hilt, and just a little bit down the bottom. So the light's sort of catching the top of the blade, and um, now mixing some of that green-gray into the light sea blue. And again, I'm just gonna just on the side of my brush, just sort of go over the top of the blade just to mark, mark out the, the edge of the blade there, like that. You can see it on camera, okay? Yeah, just sort of defining the blade, the blade edge a bit. It's really, really thin, um, so it is quite difficult. So if you just, just um, with your brush, just rub it on the uh, on the side of the brush rather than trying to do it for the tip. It's much easier to do it that way. Sort of tidying up a bit. It's a bit dirty there. Now with the pure um, green grey, I'm just going to go over the top of the hilt. Just put a little bit of a dot there on the, on the butt of the hilt as well. To the sword there as well, and I might just run a run the brush along the bottom edge now. It's got like like a groove in the center of that blade as well. So if you wanted to pick that out again, just using the brush on the flat flat edge. Just very lightly run across the um, front end of that blade and you should be able to pick it out just slightly and you can repeat doing that with um, maybe just a bit of pure white if you really want to to make that stand out still to the front here in a little bit in the, in the middle yep looks nice it really defines the um, the blade edges like that if you're doing it in the non-metallic metal if you're doing it in metallics, then maybe um, you can add some white to your to your metallic paint, or use some of the um, medium metallic medium, which is probably better. Okay, now with just a pure white, I'm just going to pick out again the. Oh, that's a bit too much. Um, just the. <clears throat> Parts on his uh, hilt again, yeah, at the butt of the hilt. I think it's pretty much done. It's not a lot of work. It's quite small. Um, this one's quite bent too. You'll see the the plastic's bent at the tip. 
which is a bit of a shame, but um, having contacted uh, Simon about it, they basically just gave me the, you know, put in, uh, dunk it in like hot water and try to bend it back, but it doesn't work for the for the weapons because the weapons are in the uh, ABS plastics and they're the hard plastic. For the soft plastic it will work, but not for the hard plastic. But that's okay, we're gonna live with that and just, you know, that's what it is. I'm just uh, carefully with that um, dark blue-gray trying to uh, line out that center of that blade, that groove. <clears throat> it's a bit messy on this side actually, to be honest. It's not as clean as the other side, so I've just got to um, keep working with it and just adjusting it a little bit. Okay. I don't think it looks too bad now. Um, if I need to, I'll, I'll just do some more correction work on it, but I, I like the front of the blade, that's the most important. And um, look, let me clean up, get some more paints on the palette, and I'll start with the flesh and hair. Okay, so we're back to do the, the face and the hair this time. Um, I'm using a bit of gold brown, I'm gonna mix that in with a bit of um, red leather. And a touch of the um, touch of black. Okay, gave it a bit of base of that, so I'll let that dry. I've got to think how I'm going to do the hair, and I think I might use because um, you've got white hair, so I'll use a bit of that light uh, green blue as a base. And for the under parts, I'm just going to mix some of that dark blue gray in there. Just giving a bit lighter on top. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good base for the, the hair already. Now, um, this skin tone. a bit of that old rose and um, flesh tone in there. Trying to leave the the recesses in his face um, dark with the previous colour under that base coat there. If I can, if I can't, well then I, I'm because the, the details are so fine then we'll just give it a bit of a wash um, a little bit later just so we can define those areas um, where there should be shade later on. Okay, so just a bit of a base there. Now, um, in the meantime, we're going to do this belt. Um, comes across here. It's hard to get to places, so let's outline that. Just mixing more of that flesh tone in the in that mixture we had for the mid tone. Again, same thing. Just going over and just trying to catch the raised parts of his uh, face. Now that belt is going to have to be, well, we can use this bit of this brown with a bit of black in there. And 
is the base of our brown, and I think it's got some kind of clip there. Buckle. Now a bit of that red leather, I'm just going to uh, water it down a bit. Give his face a bit of a wash. That adds a bit more warmth to his um, his flesh, and it sort of picks out all those uh, nooks and crannies that we might have uh, missed before. So. so that pretty much brings us to the end of the tutorial, guys. Hope that was helpful for you. And in a moment, you'll see some images of the finished Brendan Tully. And yeah, I uh, hope this tutorial was helpful. Please leave your comments below. And thank you very much for watching. Take care.